welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society and also the Amberlynn Files website. Uh, rather hot again, very sorry if I look a little bit, uh, well, if I'm a bit sweaty, but it is very hot here. Now, I did say that, um, well, I talked about how gloomy my past couple of talks have been, and uh, I really can't bring you anything happy today, I'm afraid, because on this day in Tudor history, the 31st of August, 1555, Robert Samuel, former minister of East Burkholt Church in Suffolk, was burned at the stake in Ipswich. I'm so sorry. Um, the stake was probably situated at the Cornhill in Ipswich, and Samuel is one of the famous Ipswich martyrs, Protestants who were executed in Ipswich during the reign of the Catholic Queen Mary I. Now, I've been criticised in the past by relying on John Fox. Now, his book, uh, Book of Martyrs or Acts and Monuments, is propaganda. He was writing, uh, you know, in Elizabeth I's reign. He was a Protestant. It is Protestant propaganda. But he's often the only source for real biographies, the bells are ringing out for him and for Robert Samuel, for real detailed biographies of these uh, Protestant martyrs and for accounts of their deaths as well. So that is why I share his, his work. We obviously do have to take some of the descriptions with a bit of a pinch of salt, but his biographies are very detailed and very good. He describes Samuel as being first persecuted by Mr. Foster of Copdock near Ipswich, a severe and bigoted persecutor sorry, of the followers of Christ according to the truth in the gospel. And he states that as a result of this, Samuel was deprived of his living, so he couldn't carry on with his, um, his work as a minister, but that he continued to exhort and instruct privately. Now, he also refused to give up his wife. He'd married um, his wife during Edward VI's reign when clerical marriage was allowed. And of course, when Mary I came to the throne, this was no longer allowed. And if you did want to be on the right side of Mary and her government, you gave up your marriage. But Robert Samuel didn't. And Foster found him with his wife one night and Samuel was apprehended and imprisoned in Ipswich jail before then being taken before the Bishop of Norwich and the Bishop's Chancellor for questioning. Fox describes how to intimidate Samuel that he was kept chained to a post in prison in such a manner that the weight of his body was supported by the points of his toes. I mean, that just sounds so painful. He was also given very little food, so little that apparently he was almost ready to devour his own flesh. Oh, I just can't imagine that. Awful, awful. Now, Fox goes on to write of Samuel's burning and also of a vision or dream that he had while he was in prison. He writes, When Robert Samuel was brought forth to be burned, certain there were that heard him declare what strange things had happened unto him during the time of his imprisonment. To wit, that after he had famished or pined with hunger two or three days together, he then fell into a sleep, as it were, one half in a slumber, at which time one clad all in white seemed to stand before him, who ministered comfort unto him by these words, Samuel, Samuel, be of good cheer, and take a good heart unto thee, for after this day shalt thou never be either hungry or thirsty. No less memorable it is and worthy to be noted concerning the three ladders which he told to divers he saw in his sleep, set up towards heaven, of the which there was one somewhat longer than the rest, but yet at length they became one, joining as it were all three together. As this godly martyr was going to the fire, there came a certain maid to him, which took him about the neck and kissed him. 
who being marched by them that were present was sought for the next day after to be had to prison and burned as the very party herself informed me howbeit as god of his goodness would have it she escaped their fiery hands keeping herself secret in the town a good while after and Fox writes of how the maid, a woman called Rose Nottingham, was preserved by the providence of God. So she managed to escape um, because the authorities were after, to, after her to burn her. But that there were two other honest women who fell into the rage and fury of that time who were not so lucky, who ended up getting implicated. Anne Potton, a brewer's wife, and Joan Trunchfield, a shoemaker's wife, and they were apprehended and imprisoned. And sadly, on the 19th of February, 1556, Anne and Joan were burned as heretics. And Fox concludes that these, no doubt, were those two ladders, which being joined with a third, Samuel saw stretched up into heaven. So those three ladders that he'd seen in his uh, vision were these two women and he himself as well. As for Samuel's death, Fox writes of how report from some present at his burning stated that his body in burning did shine in the eyes of them that stood by as bright and white as new tried silver. So, wow, I don't know quite what they saw, but to see someone burning and suddenly they become a silver white in front of you. But of course, you know, John Fox is writing propaganda. But it is interesting, his account of Samuel's life and his death. So I'll give you a link to read that for yourself. It uh, is very, very interesting. A monument to what are described as a noble army of martyrs executed in Ipswich was erected in Christchurch Park in Ipswich in 1903. The inscription on the monument reads, This monument is erected to the memory of nine Ipswich martyrs who for their constancy to the Protestant faith suffered death by burning. William Pikes, 1558, Alexander Goff, 1558, Alice Driver, 1558, Agnes Potton, 1556, Joan Trunchfield, 1556, John Tudson, 1556, N. Peake, 1538, Kirby, 1546, and Robert Samuel, 1555. And I just think it's wonderful that Ipswich remember these people who died at the stake. Oh, by the way, you might think, but she said Anne Potton, and it says Agnes Potton on the memorial. Well, quite often these names, Anne, Agnes, Joan, Joanne, that they were um, sort of used interchangeably. So that's why you often get, uh, yes, mistakes, errors, or you know, variations of names being used in the sources. Thank you for joining me. Sorry about another sad and gloomy one. Might be better tomorrow. You just never know with Tudor history. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking round about there. Of course, you know that these, uh, these talks are going to be on a daily basis, but you can hit the bell to be notified as well. And thank you for all the encouraging comments that you leave. I really, really do appreciate them. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye from me, a very sweaty Claire in a very, very hot Spain. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.